Hello, this is Ruin Willow with the Oh, fuck yeah, with Ruin Willow podcast. I'm super excited you're here. Yes, I am, baby. I love it when you listen to my podcast because I talk about sex and sexuality. I want you to have better sex, better fucking. That said, if you're under 18, it is time to leave the podcast now because we're talking about sex and I'm using the word fuck. I've already said that several times in the first few seconds. Oops. <laughs> That's because it's a dang good word, right? Best word in the English language, baby. Okay. I talk about sex and sexuality and erotica, things to help you have better sex. Today, I have an awesome interview with Sarah Hughes of the Sex and Bacon podcast. That's right. (laughs) And we get into why she called it that in the interview, the Sex and Bacon podcast, which is all about sex positivity and discussing social stigmas around taboo topics. Sarah has seen and experienced firsthand the shame and judgment women feel working in various entertainment and sex industries and the effects it has on them personally. She shares personal stories with shame or fear of judgment and her journey to getting to where she is now with her own sexuality and the hurdles she faced along the way. She is a self-confessed fuckaholic. There, I used the word again. And her and I had an amazing chat. She's on Instagram, Confessions of a Fuckaholic. We talked a lot about women and sexuality and her history in sexuality as a job. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to check out my new books that are live. And that is Neighborhood Sex Secrets is my latest book that just went live. And you can find that on Amazon. I've got lots of books on Amazon. And they tend to come out on Spotify first. So you can watch. I have a bunch of codes for Spotify for free books. Decadent Erotica just came out uh, over six hours. I narrated with two very sec- three very sexy voiceover male actors, artists. So Hey, get in contact with me, ruinwillow at gmail.com. If you'd like a code, I get to give them away for free because we are trying to gain reviews. So I hope that you could give me a review. And I'm excited to say that I am also, my podcast is now on Roku TV and Fire TV through the front, also through online through the front layer website. So if you happen to have a Roku device or Fire TV, my podcast is there as well. So exciting. And Full Swap Radio always is still on Full Swap Radio on Tuesdays and Wednesdays also. And thank you to my sponsors. Always going to thank my sponsors. Manscaped. You want to have more skin smacks in the bedroom, baby? Shave your balls and you will get them. It's a different sensation if you haven't done it before, but they have all the amazing manscaping tools for you to use. And you can get 20% off and free shipping with my promo code RUINWILLOW20 and 10% off Kiru sex toys. I have sex toys for men and for women. I have my pearls, which I just absolutely love. I have the pink and the blue. They're very strong and lovely and they're shaped wonderfully. And they have a lot of male sex toys as well. They're up for some awards through, I think, AVN. So that's so exciting. Thank you for listening. And let's fucking go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to talk to this person and find out all she has to say. She's also a podcaster. So that's always so much fun. Welcome, Sarah Hughes. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to see what kind of conversation we get into today. Absolutely. I always love talking about sex. So it's so much fun. (laughs) That's true. Never seems to go wrong, right? There's so many different ways you can go. But tell me about your name of your podcast. I love that. And how did you come come up with that name? Okay, it's kind of funny. Everybody asks that. Um, (laughs) It's okay. So on the back of my neck, I do have two tattoos. Mm -hmm. And the first one is a Chinese symbol that I got when I was probably 16 or 17 years old, too young to be getting tattoos. But back then they didn't check ID and it says sex. So Uh I have that. And then right underneath, I do have Aquarius like lines. And I mean, they're old because I'm now significantly older than when I first got them. And people (laughs) at work thought that they were bacon strips recently. So there was this (laughs) ongoing joke that I was going to start an OnlyFans, all food based, and I was going to call it sexy bacon. 
<laughs> and it. so it just, I ended up obviously not doing a food based only fans and did a podcast. And so it was just like sex and bacon. And then kind of like the play on words, you know, what do women talk about first thing in the morning with their friends, usually sex. So it's like over breakfast, the significance of, you know, you're sharing a meal with somebody yeah. and, yeah, you yeah. know, sex and bacon. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty unique story too. I mean, that your tattoo looked like bacon and <laughs> yeah, I figured it was something that you love, like you love sex and you love bacon or just, you know, indulgent words or, you know, okay, well, I do like, like that. sex, but I, and I, okay. So funny enough, like I, I eat 99%, I shouldn't say 99, 90% I eat vegetarian. And I've always okay. told my friends bacon is its own food group and it does not count. <laughs> So I can eat bacon because it's not a meat. It's just its own food group. And so, I mean, I do kind of really like bacon. So it worked out. That, that makes me laugh because I am a vegetarian, but I don't eat bacon, but I am a vegetarian. So that I, yeah. <laughs> I get where you're coming from. Totally. Yeah. So tell me about your background a little bit that brought you to doing this podcast. Okay. So when I was really young, I don't know why at a very young age, I always had this like weird interest in like sex and women and nudity. And I was just drawn to it. And I used to, again, at a very underage age of like 15, 16, 17, hang out at strip clubs. And I was mm -hmm. always mesmerized by like the women. And I thought like, mm -hmm. I would just wish one day I was beautiful enough to, you know, be a stripper. Mm -hmm. And I just idolized them. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward. I was a waitress in a strip club that mm. due to car accidents, then I ended up working parties, bachelor parties, doing topless waitressing, the poker parties, which then obviously that evolved into, you know, working, doing, you know, stripping in mostly mm -hmm. private parties, some clubs out East and like Ontario. And I okay. did it for like over 10 years, but like, I think it's just like, I always just felt so like judged and the shame and the guilt and just like that heavy weight of the world that like, you didn't kind of belong and, you know, you're the outcast and all this stuff. And it's like, you had to be embarrassed about, and all this, all the heavy stigmas that go along with like that mm -hmm. industry. And right. so then I got out of it because people said like, you have to eventually grow up and you have to eventually do something like normal, which I completely regret. And I wish I would have just embraced mm -hmm. loving it. Um, so I did. And I just got caught in like that whole spiral of like trying to find a job that you enjoy something that like you want to do something that made you feel right. passion, you know, and I never could. And then I just always looking for an outlet, but it was always somewhere, somehow sex industry driven, whether it's, you mm. know, sell your feet, go out with some sugar daddies, <laughs> try something, you know, only fans, pictures, this parties, I was always mm -hmm. drawn back to it. And then I just got to the point where it's like, I stopped caring about people's thoughts. And I just thought, you know, sharing about this stuff and like doing a podcast and talking to other people and just having open, honest dialogue, everything to do with sex, sex industry, everything. It was just like one way for me to kind of put out there genuinely what I actually believe in and like who I am. So I love that. And I identified with like a lot of what you said, you know, even from the idolizing strippers and thinking how sexy is that, that they're so open sexually that they can like ooze their sexuality over an entire audience. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure there's times where they don't enjoy it, but you know, there's times when they do, right? I mean, do you yeah. feel like there were times you enjoy? Yeah. And that you got, it was exciting and you were sharing your sexuality. It wasn't just for them only, right? I mean, that's maybe I romanticized it, but, you know, I feel like you've got to have some sort of handle on your sexuality in a different way than other people, if you're able to do that kind of thing. And you're more open with sharing yourself with other people. And I wish we were more open. I mean, I feel like we're just very closed off and it's like you talked about shame mm -hmm. and society's opinions and all of that. We're just so trapped in that. Oh yeah. And I feel like women are typically harder on other women. And like, that's, I think the mm -hmm. thing that it's like, I, I felt more judged probably by the women that mm -hmm. I was surrounded with or the women not in that industry. And like, that was like the thing, but like, this is just how crazy it is. Like I'm now in my forties, I had done it for, oh God, you know, 10 years still have friends in the life, the lifestyles of all the things. And I still to this day, and it's, I went two weekends ago to work a bachelorette party and mm. I was hired to come and do a, to teach them how to do a strip tease essentially. And I was oh, like, okay. it's like a workshop. Yeah, and like, yeah. in my mind, I was like, I hey, fuck it. I don't care. Like, sure. I'll go hustle. It's a couple hundred bucks, you know? 
Yeah. But going into that, it's like you have that self-conscious moment of like, oh, they're going to judge me this, this, whatever. And I walked into this house and I mean, it was literally like, I don't know, like 10 Barbie girls that just like, it's like threw up beauty oh. and elegance. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> All right. And like, because I don't see myself as that, right? Like we just mm. don't see ourselves in a beautiful way, like what other people see us. And I was like, great, this is going to suck. And like, funny enough, it was like, they were the most amazing, friendly women. And like, I'm teaching Mm -hmm. them how to do a lap dance and stuff. Cause I mean, like I'm here to do the job, whether I felt like they were prettier than me or whatever. And it's funny because like, as I'm teaching them, they're like, oh my God, like you just ooze confidence. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, no, I don't. They're like, I would feel so like silly. Like, I don't know if my husband would think I looked beautiful or sexy doing this. And then I just realized like, as much as what we think that they're judging us, it's like in that moment, we're judging ourselves, but then we're also judging them. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, you guys think I look elegant and beautiful and sexy and confident rolling around on the floor. And I think Mm -hmm. you guys to look at are so gorgeous, beautiful, elegant, and sexy that it's like, wouldn't even cross my mind to think you don't have the confidence to give like Mm -hmm. your partner a little lap dance because you just look the part. Right. But it's, yeah, it's crazy how we just think those things. Right. That is really interesting. And I can totally appreciate what you're saying, but that makes perfect sense. And, you know, and maybe you're able to do what you do because you have all of your experience. So to them, you mm-hmm. look really confident and just having the experience of doing it is going to make it easier for you to do. But, you know, that brings up a good point that really make, is, seems really sad to me is that that tells me that those women aren't necessarily supported or loved or complimented mm-hmm. nearly enough. Because if you feel like your spouse or your partner really thinks you're hot, Mm -hmm. you're not going to worry about, oh, is my husband going to like this? You're going to know. You know what I mean? So they're they're missing stuff in their relationships. And I see this all the time, too, where there isn't that, that, I don't know what you call it, that sexiness, the the turn on. Yeah. They're not being told, hey, you're you're sexy. I want to fuck you. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. questioning it. Oh yeah. Cause we get so complacent. You find each other attractive, beautiful, and you're young, you have great sex. And I'm, but I also feel like great sex to one person compared to great sex mm-hmm. to somebody else when you know, no different. And if you are young and you got in a relationship at a young age and you've been together for a while, you know, your idea of kink could be my idea of like vanilla. That's what I did when I was 19, you know? So right. like when you don't, people aren't always on the same page with those things. And mm-hmm. they think, they're doing is just fine. So they don't even realize there's an aspect of sexiness or, Mm -hmm. you know, sex appeal missing from their relationship and their sex life because they have nothing to compare it to. And because sex is not talked about fetishes, Mm -hmm. aren't talked about kink, isn't talked about all of these things are still judged and looked at as like, that's fucking weird. If you want to do anal, this I'm sorry, you want to put that where, what would I do with that toy? Like some of these women don't even have vibrators. They've never, you know, used (laughs) once. And so to think that in their relationship, there's going to be that element, like you said, of, you know, sexiness, probably don't even know what that is, you know? Right. And you bring up a good point that a lot of people don't know about sex toys. And, you know, I used to be one of those people, like I did not get my first sex toy until, oh, I don't know, maybe three, four years ago. So I went the majority of my life not having a sex toy. And now I have like 60, like I have gone the complete opposite way. And I have all these people giving me free sex toys to review. I'm an ambassador for a sex toy company. Mm -hmm. There's most people aren't like me that if they didn't have sex toy their whole life, they don't all of a sudden go crazy like I did, but (laughs) but they're really missing out. Do you know what I mean? They're really missing out. And some women are even scared of them. Totally. Like we don't take ownership. Most women don't take ownership over Mm -hmm. their own sexuality, masturbation, Mm self-pleasure. They don't know what it looks like. They don't know how to achieve it. They're embarrassed to talk about it. They're embarrassed to touch themselves. Like there's just such a closed, like, it's just like you're, they're closed off to it. They feel that Mm -hmm. internal, you know, weirdness and guilt or embarrassment because that's what they were brought up with. Like good girls don't do that, you know, especially if you're brought up in religion. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think about the contrast of what men are brought up in. It's joked about boys masturbating and jerking Mm -hmm. off. Like that's a part of our culture. That's like normal. Oh, he's in the shower. Oh, he must be jerking off. You know, the the thing that people say about teenage boys, 
And there's never that with girls. You don't ever hear anybody say, they would be like, what did you just say? Like our culture is doing this to these women, these young women. And I was a victim myself, religion, family, family shame around masturbation. I had all that shit just keeps happening. It keeps perpetuating. So I'm so glad that you and I can talk about this and we Mm -hmm. podcast out there so that we don't keep perpetuating this thing, this awful dread over our whole world. I never even thought about that before when you just said that, like, it's always talked about like boys, you know, wet Mm -hmm. dreams and masturbation, but you're right. Nobody ever talks about young girls touching themselves, masturbating. Wow. I just didn't even think about it. It's like, it's, it's like, as if we don't get horny, like, right. You know, we right. don't have those same impulses and urges. We don't have a clip that has a million nerves and gets stimulated when you rub <laughs> up against it or panties rub on it. Or like to think that like, we don't even deserve the acknowledgement that, you yeah. know, our mm-hmm. body parts and our hormones create the same sort of urges and feelings is actually really sad. And it really creates this false belief that the clitoris is different than the penis. When mm-hmm. really they're very much the same thing, only it's the clitoris is embedded inside the woman for the most part. But mm-hmm. literally, they come from the same cells. They they differentiate. I mean, they even start out as the same damn fucking organ until they start to differentiate, you know, yeah. like and most people don't realize how large the clit really is. And so we're seen as like this separate thing. We're like this anomaly that doesn't have these sexual feelings. I mean, to illustrate this, we see young girls touching themselves. Like I'll give, I'll give my example. I always tell the story. When I was maybe in elementary school, I realized how wonderful it felt to touch my clit. Mm-hmm. And I was so innocent. I was so excited. I ran to my mom and I'm like, mom, you're not going to believe this. It feels amazing when I touch between my legs. And she looked at me and said, you shouldn't be doing that. Shut me down for oh. masturbation. Oh. And so, you know what I did? I decided going to be a grinder. So I started to grind on pillows and stuffed animals. <laughs> I became a fucking grinder. I was obeying. I wasn't touching it, but I was still getting off. Now, see, would you say that to a boy? No, you wouldn't. You would just be like shut the door. They'd say, oh, just shut yeah. the door. You don't have to, you know, they wouldn't look at you and say, young bodies, the parts still feel right. Mm-hmm. Your hand still feels. Why do we think our clit doesn't feel? I mean, yeah. young children can feel their sexual organs. Get over it, people. It's a biological fact, but it's taboo, yeah. especially for girls. I love that for you, though, that you just were like, okay, won't touch it. I'll just find something else to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You and go, so girl. Funny. I really didn't realize that until recently. I mean, ever since I've been doing this podcast and talking to people, that's mm-hmm. when it really hit me that that was my course. And that's why I did that. Yeah. So I found my way around it and I did it. But, you know, I still... For me too, I still didn't really understand what an orgasm was. I didn't understand all that stuff that we aren't taught. In fact, when I had mm-hmm. sex, I, had the, I don't even think the word clitoris was something they said, but of course they said penis. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. If I, I literally learned probably two months ago that my clit has legs. I didn't even yes, know that yes. it ended like a whole other part of like my body and you could touch in different areas to like yep. stimulate it and engorge it. Like I've literally just learned these things. And like, and I think of it as like, I've been a horny person having sex for decades upon decades. And I didn't even know these things because who the fuck teaches you that, you know, but like people should be taught that, you know, people Mm -hmm. should be taught their anatomy, what the nerves do, what the pleasure can feel like, what it maybe won't feel like for some women, different things. I like, Mm -hmm. I just learned that you can also have, uh, cervical orgasms. Yeah. You know, like yep. there are so many different ways that we can have pleasure, but we have mm-hmm. to be willing to like touch ourselves. Right. Yes. And if we can't touch ourselves and we can't discover those things for ourselves, how can we relay that information to a partner? And how can we have our partner touch ourselves, touch us like that and recreate those things. But think of how beautiful it would be. If you knew those things about yourself, you could share mm-hmm. it with your partner. You're connecting in such an intimate way, knowing each other in such depth, like who doesn't want that sexual connection with somebody, you know? Exactly. And so many people feel so much shame. They don't even feel like they can talk about that, you know, like, oh yeah. number one, they feel like they can't explore their bodies and find that information out through masturbation. Then they feel like they can't say it mm-hmm. and they feel like they're going to be judged. There's going to be shame. Oh, you shouldn't be feeling that. Oh, you like that. Oh, that's weird. You know, like there's so much judgment and yeah. you just need to get rid of that fucking judgment. Oh yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. 
And like, I had a girlfriend, like, I don't know, 15 years ago, this is how taboo things were back then. Like she was telling us this story that she had sex with this guy and she's like, and he was, you know, fucking me from behind. She's like, mm-hmm. and I reached around and I fingered my own asshole. And she was, but like, she would have been drinking, but she was right. so humiliated yes. with herself that like she touched her own asshole during sex, but she's like, it felt right. so good, but like, I can never see him again. I'm humiliated. And we, I remember the time we were like, Oh, oh my God. And like, and I was thinking, <laughs> I was like, oh, I could never, Oh, right. wow. And like now, I mean, I fuck myself more in the ass than I do anything else with something. And I tell my friends and I show them the videos, look at the dildo right. I took in my own ass. I'm so proud of myself. Like, you know, and it's like, but back yeah, then it was yeah. just like, Oh, you did right. not do that. And now right. I'm like, you know, like I did it all share it. Everybody should do it. You need to learn this, try this, you know, pleasure this, but yes. yeah. I think it's interesting too. Like even just even talking about that, there's some women who don't want that don't like doggy because they don't want someone looking at their anus. Like they don't mm-hmm. even want it to be looked at. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my God. My girlfriend is like that. It's funny. Literally last night we had this conversation and she's like, I just need to find somewhere that'll bleach my ass full. And I'm like, why mm. the fuck do you care so much about the what? color of your ass? I don't understand asshole? this. Yeah. Tell me, what did she say? Oh, she's just like, well, so here's the funny thing. There's a, like some of us girls, like, you know, we still do parties here and there and stuff restarted. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm claiming my fucking stripper hood back again. I don't even give a shit. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. And yes. so we have one girlfriend that's quite younger than us. And she has this beautiful pink little asshole. And my one girlfriend is just like, she always <laughs> talks about her perfect little asshole. And I was like, yeah, I saw it last week. And I was like, yeah, it's nice. I'm like, she's like, yeah. She's like, don't tell her that though. I was like, what do I care? Like, why do right. I care what my asshole looks like? But she's been obsessed over the color of her asshole compared to our friends for like two years. She's like, I just oh my don't gosh. Like it. She's like, it's dark. I want it to be the same color as my <laughs> other skin. I'm like, it's an asshole. Like, no guy right. is looking at your asshole thinking that's a darker tinge of, you know. Yes, that color there is but, ugly. I can guarantee you they don't. Some of them might even like it. I don't know where, where she's going with that because some men are even going to like that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I know she's obsessed with bleaching her asshole. I was like, listen, just buy the kit. I'll bleach your fucking asshole for you. <laughs> Do not waste money on it. But I was like, again, nobody's looking at your asshole and thinking or caring the color of it. Oh, like, right. No, but, no, no, yeah. no, no. That's almost silly. I mean, I get it because we get, so, we get self-conscious, but really, totally. I mean, especially if you're comparing it and I suppose like, oh, okay. Yeah. There's a pinker one, but I mean, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> like, My asshole's pinker than your asshole. Like that's right, so like, really- you guys are going eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Eh. <laughs> take the pinker butthole, you know, like, oh but. my gosh, I need to do that poll on Twitter. I do lots of t- polls on Twitter and be like, what color asshole? And does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me know. And then I can at least show her and just be like, listen, right. it's been pulled. Nobody cares what your asshole Nobody looks like. Fuck. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my gosh. I'm dying. It's hilarious. I always wondered about that too. So like, it's just up for the outside, right? There's no bleaching and on the inside. It's outside skin only because yeah. I've heard of these, you know, kits. And I'm like, what does that really mean? Yeah, you know, like- it's just the outside skin color. And like, I mean, realistic, mm. I've read that you can take hydrogen peroxide, put it on mm. there. Like you can do that multiple times a week or something. But I mean, again, like it's my booty hole. Like, right. I'm not too and, concerned. And it, really. I mean, I think that your friend also needs to consider the fact that there are different colored pussies out there and that's not a bad thing. And your pussy color changes. Like I learned this mm-hmm. a couple of years ago. I didn't even know this, that your skin can actually change color during sexual play it, during different times of the month. And I've started to pay attention to that. And it really does change color. Like sometimes I got more purples. Sometimes I'm more all pinkish and it changes. Oh. Pay attention to that because, and I did not know this until someone told me that, that that is a thing. And I'm like, holy shit, they're right. Yeah. It's crazy. That is crazy. Well, you know what? Even like texture, like internal yeah. texture. I had a guy friend mm-hmm. tell me that like not that long ago. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, sometimes you just slide in and like right away you're like, oh, this isn't going to be good. And I was like, what? Oh, and he's like, yeah. He's like, some of them you slide in and it's like a perfect little cloud of cushiony softness that grips your dick and it feels great. And then some of them you slide in and it's like kind of rough and a little more textured. And he's like, and it doesn't feel as good. He's like, it doesn't matter if it's tighter. 
He's like, the texture uh-huh. itself can be a little bit off or rough. And he's like, and then it kind of just isn't as great. I was like, interesting. And I wonder what brings that about. It could be her time of the month or it could be her mm-hmm. level of arousal. You know what I mean? That could change oh. because that's another thing. I've learned so much. I feel like I was like taking classes. I've done so, talked to so many amazing people. I did not know this either. I learned that as we are aroused, our vagina actually lengthens and gets bigger. So it can accept something big like a cock or a dildo. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And so like, if it can change just during that, think of all the different changes that are happening and might have to do with the level of arousal of the woman. I felt like I had another point in there and I lost it because I was imagining the, the vagina lengthening. <laughs> it's funny, as you were saying that too, I was like picturing, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean, like what girl doesn't do every now and then like a little like finger test swab thing, you know, check mm-hmm. your like, whatever your discharge shit. And I was saying this to my mm-hmm. girlfriend, I was like, sometimes when I do that, when I'm in the shower, I'm like, fuck mm-hmm. my vagina's tight. And then it's like, right. I'll be with a guy. And I'm like, I felt way tighter this morning. And like, you know, yeah. and, but like you said, when you get aroused, it opens up to take something, but like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I wish it would just stay a little bit more, you know, firmer to take <laughs> it at least on like the start, you know, be like, yeah, yeah, I was that tight, but <laughs> Right. And I think too, if you, if you've ever tried to put in a dildo too early or had sex too early when you're not aroused, you can tell too, cause it might hurt a little bit more. It's not accepting mm-hmm. it because it isn't that pliable. Maybe it hasn't expanded yet. It's so, so yeah. interesting. All these things we don't know. And when I've talked to some of these people that have been studying this for many years, they said that they're in textbooks and whatnot. The clit was actually completely removed from many of these textbooks modern textbooks was actually not even talked about and not, it was removed from anatomy text for a while. Isn't that Jeez. crazy? It's a fucking body part. Like, wow. That's just disturbing as a woman to know that it was actually purposely left out. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, isn't it? To think like, of really like the lengths disturbing. that they would go to, to literally remove that. Like they don't want us to learn about it, to know about it for those reasons. Yeah. You know, because yeah, yeah, women are meant to have sex for having children, not for pleasure, right? Control. It's pure yeah. control of women is what mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's crazy. So it's so good that we have these kind of things that where we're talking about it. So people can know. But you know, you mentioned earlier that you didn't know what the clip looked like. And I didn't either until I, I interviewed a woman. She was one of the people that helped figure out what the aroused and gorged internal clit looked like and she helped image it and that was the first time I was like maybe two years ago that I saw what a clit really looks like and it looks kind of like an octopus you're right it's got these arms and lobes yeah. and it's it's really I would have never in a million years guessed it looked like that it's more like an alien or something it's not you know a dick is just a straight rod you know it's just simple <laughs> right <laughs> we're way more complex than that <laughs> yeah which I love like I feel like it's almost like we're gifted in the sense that we yes. can have so many different types of orgasms and so many different pleasure mm-hmm. points and nerve things. It's just, we have to take the time to want to discover it and to like do it. I interviewed a Tantra coach a little while back and then I've been working mm. with her and it's crazy because oh, nice. like, even like the self-pleasure practice that like through Tantra mm-hmm. that she gives me for homework, I'm like it's, it's time. Like you have to dedicate 25 minutes to yourself mm-hmm. so many times a week to do this practice. And sometimes in my head, and I like get resistance towards it. Like, I don't want yeah. to, I just want the quick thing. I just want like All 60 right. seconds, which <laughs> is so insane because we're so programmed to, you know, quick, yeah. quick, 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 quick. But mm-hmm. the times where it's like, I do it, I'm like, this is so much better. I literally have like a 15 to 20 minute full body tingling orgasm mm-hmm. compared to the 30 seconds that I just wanted to get over and done with to, you know, go to bed or get out my door. But it's that, that mental part of like, sitting yourself down saying, I'm, Mm -hmm. we're going to do this. We're dedicating this time to ourselves. We deserve this, the self-pleasure putting away everything else and giving back to ourselves. Cause we've been learned taught for so many years that like, we can't do that. We have to take care of everybody else, Mm -hmm. take care of the children, take care of the man, take care of the house, do this, do this, that we didn't have that kind of time for ourselves. And now it is becoming more of a thing of self-pleasure, self, you know, mm-hmm. love and the women standing more in their power and saying, no, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. These are my boundaries. This yep. is my value. Yep. This is my worth. 
And it's crazy to see how many people don't like it, you know? Yes. Oh, for sure. But it is, you see more and more people doing it. You see more and Mm -hmm. more, you know, sex coaches and women and just, you know, people, anyone, people like us. But it's so true. You need to take the time. And I do that too. I, I, I often will be using a sex toy and I'll be like, okay, I should be done. I really should go to bed. And I'm like, wait, no, I want to push myself. What's going to happen mm-hmm. if I do this? What's going to happen if I do that? And that's the, what we need to do, especially since we haven't done it the majority of our lives. Now is the time to do it. There's mm-hmm. no time to waste. Do it now. Yep. So true. But I don't know. I think it, I think it will change. I think people are discovering more they're seeing more, they're learning more. There's so much more yes. research. And like, like you said, people are talking about it more. And even on the mm-hmm. men's side for mental health and sexual health, like I see more of that online now, like we ever yeah. have. Yeah. And I love that for them. Mm-hmm. I love that mm-hmm. for, you know, their discovery, their, yes. you know, ability to kind of stand together united and be like, it's okay for us to have mental health problems and it's okay for us to yep. talk about it. And oh, yeah. recognizing that sometimes those mental health problems that you haven't been able to talk about for so long are actually what's creating sexual health problems and yeah. that there's an actual tie to that. And before it's just medicated, yep. here's a Viagra, yep. Yep. here's a Cialis, mm-hmm. but it's like, yep. no, what is the real reason as to why you're having sexual health issues? What is your mental right. health? You know, yes. and asking those questions and saying, it's okay to ask those questions and it's okay to talk about it. That brings up a really good point where women were, you know, kind of discouraged from masturbating and and talking about sexuality things. Men had the same thing, only it was about their emotions Mm -hmm. and what they could feel and what they could tell. And I had a guest that talked about that and really honed in on the fact that, yeah, a lot of men feel like they can't feel things, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's not manly. That's not okay for me to talk about or say that I'm feeling. And so yeah, this, our culture doesn't only fuck us over, it fucks them over too. And we're, yeah, we have different things to work on, but we have things to work yeah. on that are so important to, like you said, even our sexuality and yeah, the whole pill. I heard somebody talking about too, how they're trying to create a female Viagra and everybody's like, why don't we just deal with the real reasons of this and stop trying to fucking medicate everything, mm-hmm. you know, like we're natural bodies. We don't need pills to fuck, Yeah, you know? Okay. I understand some people may need it for certain reasons, but you know, most people, they need to fix something to make their sex better. Uh, Take a pill. Yeah. Yeah. Connecting back into yourself, into your, your physical, your spiritual, your, your mental, figuring all of that kind of grounding, getting right with that. And I think it's like your sexuality essentially writes itself once you've kind of uncovered and like, you know, gone through the layers of those things, but it's hard. People do a lot of people don't want to do the work. And then sometimes people, you know, and, and I get it, it's scary. It can be messy. Mm -hmm. And like you, when you start to uncover it all, I mean, you usually uncover a lot of shit, but on the flip side of it, what you gain long-term is such freedom, Mm -hmm. right? It's like you get such control over yourself, your body. And like, you actually just like, you can just be like, okay, I know it. Mm -hmm. I got it. I've learned all their tools. I've processed this. I recognize things when they come up, but it's not affecting you in the same way. And honestly, you can use your sexual health to help clear and heal the mental health part of it. And that's what I've really had to like learn and discover is like through healing my sexual health, Yes, I'm healing so many other things and I can use my sexuality to heal. And like, that's kind of the cool part of it is like with all of this breath work and womb work and sexual work, Mm -hmm. I'm having orgasms, enjoying my pleasure, but I'm also healing so many other things. And like, that's, what's beautiful. I think about being a woman, you know? Oh, absolutely. One of the things that struck me when you said that is I interviewed a couple of dominatrixes and dominate, how do you say that dominatrices? I don't know, whatever, two different dominatrix women. And they talked about how that whole mental health piece Mm -hmm. is a part of what they do. And it's sexual, it's sexuality. And it's so interesting how it really seems like in our culture that it's separated. Like sex is not really tied with our mental health in Mm -hmm. the general talkings of things in the culture, the society, but it really is. It's hugely intertwined. Mm -hmm. And something that even like, I was kind of like taken aback when they were talking about it. Cause I'm like, is this a thing? Wait, this really makes a lot of sense. Like I was ingrained to thinking that sex was like separate from mental health. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah. It's pretty yeah. We're taught there's a disconnect, but it's so connected, you yeah. know, which I mean, really, maybe that's part of the reason why they don't want us to know it. Right. Right. If we keep them not knowing this information and keep it away from them, then all of these other problems, we can medicate them and, you know, Mm -hmm. keep them, you know, I don't know, not awakened, not learning, not discovering. And we can tell them what they need to learn and, you know, what that means and keep them in the little box and program them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like something I read recently that was disturbing. And then that was a part of it, like control their sexuality, control their reproduction. Mm-hmm. It's how you control large groups of people, their finances, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So it's it's on purpose. People think that this stuff is not malignant, but it's definitely not benign. Mm, <laughs> it's on no. purpose. <laughs> no. But God it's forbid people think for themselves in that respect, not to be, you know, not to say it, but I said it. So, right. So yeah. when doing your, your work as a stripper and whatnot, did you feel like there was that sexual or a psychology and mental health component, or is that something that you've come to realize more as time has gone on? I think for me at a younger age, it was more about, uh, I liked being in control. Mm-hmm. I liked that, like, and like, I was a shy girl, like growing up. But I liked that, like when I would step into a room of like, say 30 men, it's like, I felt very empowered that it's like, all of a sudden I could could just control the room. It's like, I could be like, Hey guys, you know, tell them to shut up. This is what we're doing. (laughs) And it just felt like you had the power. And Mm -hmm. I think through which, you know, not maybe knowing at the time through traumas I had had at a young Mm -hmm. age, that was my way of taking back my control and my power. Yeah. And so it was very expressive for me in that way. But I also didn't really see myself as like a beautiful girl in that way or attractive. So it also gave me a lot of like validation that I think I probably needed because I was insecure, low self-esteem, you know, like any typical young girl. And I think for me, it was one way that like I I was able to fill that void of like validation of like feeling beautiful and feeling desired and wanted. And it obviously came through the form of, you know, men, but it was very empowering, Uh, but like very expressive too, for me to be able to, to do a lap dance or to do a little strip strip tease. Like you kind of get in your head and you get into the moment. And it's like this erotic dance you have with yourself where I could be giving a lap dance to, I mean, not to like, you know, like literally the grossest person on like earth, but I'm so in my Mm. moment of what I'm doing that like I turn myself on and it becomes Mm -hmm. like this, this sexual embrace for myself, which I found to be very healing. Oh, absolutely. That just totally makes sense. And it sounds Mm -hmm. wonderful. And it makes sense because, you know, you are in control. You're taking control. Yeah. You took control of your sexuality and doing what you did. And many women don't do that and they suffer for it, you know? Yeah. So I I feel like it's, yeah, I feel like it's getting more and more common. There's getting to be more and more books out there for women to own their sexuality, Mm -hmm. you know, instead of having this shame. And it's just hard because it's so ingrained in everybody, like we said, in religion, family, culture. But I do feel like the more that we talk about it, the better it's getting. And the more people I see doing it gives me hope. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Recently on one of my but I mean, like, there's a lot of men that are so stuck in like this mm. traditional world of belief and like yes. what like irks me because I'm like, really, really like, like you still believe those things. But like, right. I think a guy had commented on one of my things and basically it said something along the lines of like, there is something wrong sexually in a relationship. It is always the woman's fault. And oh, I'm like, geez. And like, all I could respond with was laughing emojis because I was like, he cannot be for real right now. Oh, that person just needs to go disappear into the sky right? and say, bye bye. Oh. See you now. Yeah. Oh I, was, I was like, I'm not going to get into this with you. But like, mm-hmm. it, but genuinely, he probably believes that is like, that's how he was raised. And like, women are at fault for everything. And if something's not working, the woman needs to look at what she's doing wrong in the bedroom. And it's not the man's job for this. It's the woman's job for this. And it's just like, and I like it. I wanted to respond and be like, yeah, you sound like you'd be fun to fuck. But I, I was like, you're single. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you're still a virgin, right? 
<laughs> yeah. Left it alone. Just put some laughing emojis. I'm like, oh, yeah, good joke. But people yeah, sometimes it's not worth going after those people. But yeah, and sometimes you just want to just like, I mean, you just aghast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, Ugh. yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, the online police will just they'll say it like the other people will just say it for me. I'm like, I don't even have to, but yeah, that's true. Blows my mind. People's, you know, but that's where I think that old school traditional thought process too, for men was you, you know, you married the housewife, but you Mm -hmm. fucked the whore. And that's where cheating was, you know, right. If she's Mm -hmm. good in bed, do not marry her. She's a whore. She's a slut. Uh, so that's not who you marry. You do not have children with the whore, but you, right. you marry the housewife, you have kids with her and then you fuck the whore on the side. And it was like that, that accepted, you know, norm of that's my wife. I could never do that to her. I got a girlfriend right. for that, you know? Exactly. And that's so fucked up because you know, mm-hmm. that woman is feeling neglected. She wants to be fucked like a whore too. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so fucking stupid. It just, it's annoying. It's like the, what is that? Like, I don't know. It's probably like a 1960s mentality, right? Yeah. The whole yeah. housewife and yeah. But I've it's, dated it's guys insane. even three, four years ago that I've been in love with that I'm like, and like, I know that they loved me and I'm like, let's mm-hmm. do this, this and buy this toy. And like one day the one guy said to me, he's like, do you remember when we first met? And you told me that whole Betty Veronica theory of like your guy friends say that about the same thing. It's like, you marry the Veronica, mm-hmm. but you fuck the Betty or whichever one it was. Yeah. And he's like, I never really got it. He's like, but like now I do, he's like, and I don't want to do those things with you. I don't think I could do those things with you. And I was just oh, like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Like, that is so seriously fucking stupid. Right? Oh my gosh. Like, so we're in love. You love me, which means then you can't be freaky with me, but you'll be freaky mm-hmm. with like the escorts that like, you know, you use, which cause I, I, I knew and I didn't care, but like, it was like, yeah. so why couldn't we just do it all? Why couldn't we be the weirdos right. together? You know, but- and you might as well just be siblings. You know what I mean? Your siblings, exactly. your cousins, whatever. Yeah. I don't know what you call it, but more like siblings. Yeah. That is so disturbing. It's like, do they mm-hmm. realize how stupid and asinine and backwards that is? Right? Like, if I trust a guy, the dirtier I am with him. Like, right. the more that I love you, the more weird shit I want you to do with me. You know, exactly. because I don't care. I know you're not judging me for it because we yes. have a foundation of love and trust. I'm not going to do the weird thing with the guy I met two minutes ago at the bar that I took home. Mm -hmm. Then I know he's going to look at me like, what the fuck? And I'm out of here, you know, but like the person I have a bond with and I'm like, Hey, I saw this online once I heard it can do this. Let's try it. You know? Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Guys need to catch up to that. Yes. That's a huge red flag. Get out of those relationships. Women who are in any of anybody says anything remotely like that to you. Red flag. Get Mm -hmm. out. It's not going to get better. It's not going to go away. I mean, not saying that people can't change, but it's going to take effort and they may not have the capacity or the interest to do that work. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. And like guys, I think get a little bit weirded out quicker than like girls over things Mm -hmm. too. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, even with like (laughs) anal play, I've -hmm. had guys who will say like, I mean, if there was like shit on my dick, yeah, I'd probably never look at you the same or whatever. Oh, geez. And like, I'm like, okay, but like, you know, you're the one who wanted to do that. And then like, Uh you know, and they're like, but like, I really want you to do this to like my butt. And I'm like, okay. They're like, but I would never let actually let you because like, I would be too worried that like, I would get shit on you. I'm like, right. But I wouldn't judge you if you did. And I wouldn't care. But like, you're right. literally going to judge me if I do when you're the one who wants to do it. So it's like, no, women are far more accepting of all the weird yeah. and all the whatever. Guys are the ones who are a little bit just like, eh, I can't quite go down that road. That's yeah. not even a logical line of reasoning. Like, that's just messed up. I think it doesn't yeah. even make any sense, honestly. Yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I hear what you're saying on that. I totally agree. Women are more accepting of such things. It's so bizarre, right? Yeah. <laughs> What the hell is up with that? <laughs> I don't know. Like if a guy asked me like to peg him, I'd be like, cool, I'll peg you, you know? Sure. Like, right. no problem. I'm not going to judge you for it, but like, you're going to judge me for that one thing. Like I, I like I want to do like, no, but wow. No. So I have to ask you, do you have a favorite sex toy? I always like to talk about sex toys too. I do. So I had, I was gifted last year, a, one of those fuck machines. 
Oh, um, okay. Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's crazy because it came with like, my God, probably 10 or 15 different like dildo shape sizes oh, and whatever. Wow. But mm -hmm. uh, I've shared it before. But my favorite one is like, there is literally one toy that comes that you can bend. It's like a bendable dildo mm -hmm. attachment and you can okay. bend it into a 90 degree angle. And oh, wow. so I enjoy that one because I mean, if most women know your G spot, well, as soon as you kind of go in, it's right up there, you know, near the yeah, front. So yeah. I can bend this little, this little mm. attachment into that 90 degree angle. And I can give myself like really good, you know, G spot squirting orgasm. So it's kind of mm, like my favorite nice. tour. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The whole squirting thing too. Like some people still don't believe it's a thing and some people think it's pee. Yeah. You know, like, isn't that crazy that in this day and age, we don't understand female sexual fluids. Mm, yeah. It's I bizarre. know. I know <laughs> people are so, and it's like, I mean, you can Google it and then they're still like, nah, yeah, I think it's that I'm like, okay, well, let me piss all over you then. <laughs> I know. See if you notice the difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do a taste test, smell test, you know, color test. Sure. You let me know which one you prefer. <laughs> actually pretty funny. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so yeah, I should do that actually. Just be like, so yeah. <laughs> we're going to do research. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll grab the towel. Yeah, exactly. What's pretty your funny. favorite toy? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm really a clit junkie. I'm all about my clit. That's so I'm the toys I'm obsessed with that can get me off really fast are the Zumio clitoral stimulators. Okay. They're made it up from a Canadian company and there's four different types and I've tried three of them and, and the clit suckers, the ones that are like those pulse ones. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I can come just from my clit stimulation alone, just mm -hmm. flat out. That's all I need. It's usually bigger if I can do G spot and clit, but I can come just from that. And I love the really strong Zumio toys. I just, they're, they're weird. They look like a pen, right? Okay. So it's like this thick pen. And it tapers to a little point. So it's very, very pinpointed pleasure. And the oh. thing that I just blew my mind, I talked about this with a guest recently on my podcast, what it taught me, since it's so fine and pinpointed, it taught me there are different parts of my clit that have stronger and lesser sensations across it. And on one side is stronger than the other. And it just blew my mind. And so we were talking about this and she said, that's a thing. She said, that's called clit mapping. You can map your clit to see where it's stronger in different spots and weaker in others. And since it's so little tiny like that, like this little pinpoint, you can test different spots easily. Blew my oh, mind. Oh, I feel like I need one of these. <laughs> you do, you do. And so I figured out my top upper right quadrant is stronger and then the left it's upper also, but it feels good all around it. Like if you do also like a circle yeah. around it with this toy, you can feel, I can feel the sensations varying if I go around it slowly, like it's strong, 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 less, less, strong, less, you know, like it varies as I go around and it really shows you where on your clit is most stimulating. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. It was a Z-U-M-I-O is what it You'll is. You'll have I've to tried... send me like a link or a picture. I yeah, definitely oh, need to try sure. that. I heard, and it's funny because I read and I had done an interview with somebody a long time ago talking about orgasmic meditation. So oming, mm. which yeah. there was a yeah, huge documentary. Yeah. And they said yes. that the left side of a woman's clit and typically like your vulva area is typically more sensitive. And I can't remember the reasoning, but I remember like saying that. So in like this oming practice that people do, it's like typically they discovered that like women on the left side, that's like that rubbing point where you have like okay. these more heightened, but it's like you, you have to find it. There's something where yeah. on the left side, there's this different type of nerve that whatever. And I'm, I've never been able to okay. find it, but I've never really pinpointed or tried to that extent. So right. I'm curious now. Well, Azumio might help you. And I do find like my left is strong, but for me, the right side is stronger, but okay. I would have never known it if I had not tried this toy. I mean, this yeah. Is I would have never known because if you think about it, like if you're using those clit suckers, it's a circle yeah. and it's hitting every point of your clit. So you can't say, oh, it feels stronger over here, over there, because it's this whole pressure all around. Yeah. It. But with that toy, you can touch, you know, very fine points. Oh, interesting. I'm not going to lie. All this sex talk. I'm like, I might go masturbate after this. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
That's so funny. what is your, what are your burning new things that you've learned? I mean, I know we've talked about some of them, but I know it's, isn't it fun to have guests and you find these new things. Like, I feel like I have a guest on, they tell me something. I'm like, oh, dang, that's really cool. You know what I think like a lot for me is, so I've talked to a few like that are big into like the psychology of like mm. the brain and things like that. And it mm -hmm. really was, I think through everything, it's like learning my boundaries, but then also mm. giving myself permission to have a boundary or be okay with not liking something or needing something to be different. Like something as stupid as like, like, you know, for girls, how sometimes it's like, okay, you have somebody come over and, you know, you go into a room and it's maybe really brightly lit. And like, I've had instances mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, you're making out the carry you to the bedroom and then like the light is on and I'm so distracted by the light being uh -huh. on. And so yeah, like yeah. in my mind of like, oh, fuck, maybe like my stretch marks, you can see more. And oh, he's going to find me attractive with this weird light on that all of yeah. a sudden I turn myself off and I'm no mm. longer present because I'm obsessed yep. over this light. But then in my mind, I'm like, but if I tell him to shut off the light, he's going to think that means I'm insecure and wow. I'm not enjoying this. And it right. was like having interviews with, you know, actual psychologists who are like, no, that's actually a thing. And there's a sensory yeah, yeah, yeah. thing and certain women need certain sensory things. And like the one lady I talked to, she's like, she's like, for me, she's like, I have to have socks on when I have sex. She's like, right. Feet being cold completely takes away from this. And she's like, and that's the thing is giving yourself permission to be like, Hey, you know what? I'm really enjoying what we're doing, but I'm kind of distracted by this light. Do you mind if we dim it a little bit? And like right. knowing that it's okay to ask for certain things to right. increase our pleasure and increase us being able to be in the moment. And then just her teaching me kind of how to pull yourself back into the moment, because let's be honest, once we get distracted and mm. something else is in our mind, we are so not in it anymore. And now you're just going yeah. through the motions to get them off because right. it's like, oh, I still got to finish what I started, but like yeah. not going to get there. And then the learning how to be able to actually come back to that so those mm. are like the big things for me, I think. And like not thinking, overthinking the little things of like, hey, you know what? I really like it when it smells really good in here or when there's like a certain music on, it turns me on. And if you're a guy who enjoys giving pleasure and you like seeing your partner turned on, then you're gonna be like, yeah, let's do it. Fuck, I'm all for it. Over being like, what do you mean? That's weird. I don't want a candle right. burning, you know? And like those things. So it's been cool for that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you need a partner that's not going to say that kind of stuff to you and not jump to mm -hmm. those conclusions, be making judgments. But that really falls in line with what I've heard a lot about those. What do they call the sexual blueprints? Like if you have a sen mm -hmm. sensual, like it sounds like maybe you have the sensual because you need, you like the feel of things. You like the yeah. way things look. And there's like, I think there's like five different blueprints or something like that. Somebody wrote this amazing book and I'm drawing a blank on who it is, but they, they talk about that. And, it, and that is a thing. And you need to have the best sex, you need to know your, which category you fall into. Totally. Like, yeah. Oh, for sure. How about you? What's like the, your favorite thing that you've learned? Oh my gosh. That is like so hard to pick, but I really liked learning that I wasn't, I really liked learning that I wasn't the only one that was finding out this clip mapping stuff. Cause I'm like, this is, is I weird. Is my clit like numb on certain areas? Like, you know, mm. have I had damage, you know? And she's like, no, no, this is a thing. This is a thing. And it's, it's true. And it's real. And most people don't know about it because, you know, our fingers are as big as they are. Your finger yeah. touches a clit. You're almost touching the full fucking thing. You know, like there's different size clits too. That was something that kind of blew my mind. I, I talked with some other people who do a sexuality podcast and they were talking about the different sizes of clits, just like there's different sizes of dicks. Right. And one person brought up a really interesting point that, that some women, they, this is a theory that some women may like anal more because their clit might extend back there more than in other women. And I thought, if that's true, that's really mind blowing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so to think that your clit could actually be stimulated from anal sex because your clit is just stretching back there further. And I'm like, someone yeah. needs to study this because I'm really curious if this is true, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's mind blowing to think about, right? Because it does look kind of like an octopus. You got these lobes and these legs, like, you know. Yeah. Like it's a wishbone looking. I know, isn't that, that blew me away when she said that. And I think she, I don't know if she was talking about if it was something she had read or if it was something she was just postulating. And I'm like, yeah, oh, it's fascinating thought process. 
it see, makes sense. Yeah. And I have a guy friend who said he dated this one girl that like, she loved anal over anything else and always asked for that. And like, and I, and I'd said to him, cause like, I was like, well, not all women actually know and have G spot orgasms. I said, so if right. she doesn't have orgasms through penetration and mm-hmm. the only way she can really have an orgasm is through anal, I was like, that would be why, like, you know, like mm-hmm. if you can have an orgasm through anal sex, which I know a lot of women do, they but do. you can't yeah. have one through penetration. Well then, yeah. Why would you waste your time on just, you know, vaginal penetration if it's not really doing anything for you? Right. You right. Know? Like, see, I can't come from just G-spot penetration. I need my clit involved. I mean, it's very, be very rare for me to come. I'd have to be really turned on and maybe the right exact pressure, but it's, it's hard for me to come from just G-spot alone. See, and I've never had a clitoral orgasm during sex. Oh, haven't you? Okay. No, See? I That's G-spot orgasm though. But like, mm. I find when a guy grabs a vibrator and holds it to like my G-spot during, or my clit during sex, it distracts yeah. me from like, what oh. like my other feeling of like the fact that I'm going to have a G-spot one or like building up that, like now it's like, I'm focused on that, especially because when you're not holding it in the right place, it's kind of off to the side. And like, when you're trying to like, you know, ride yeah. somebody and they're holding a toy. I'm like, there's too much going on. And uh-huh, like, I uh-huh. cannot breathe into what's happening. And like, I've never, ever from like a guy using a toy ever. So isn't that wild? Because I'm like the flip of that. Now that you say that, I think about the fact that I've had times where I'm stimulating the G spot and the clit where I start to get distracted because of the way my G spot is being stimulated. And I'd rather that go away and it just be the clit. I mean, that's fascinating that we're the opposite in that way, but just shows you how many differences there are in women. That's totally, but by myself, I can 100% with your clit. Okay. Yeah. But like something about like, yeah, the other way around with the guy being there, I don't, I don't know. I've just never been able to, but. Oh, that's so interesting. Fascinating. (laughs) We need more study in these areas, right? Yeah. Right. Like we're all just so different and like, it's Uh, fascinating that like we all are so different and different things work for different people, which mm -hmm. also then goes to show that there isn't a one size fits all solution to getting off a girl, which most guys seem to think like, Oh no, no, no. I can do that for you. Don't worry. I've been known to be the best (laughs) pussy eater around these parts. Don't you worry. (laughs) Right. Well, what worked for Betty down the street does not work for fucking (laughs) Sue. So until you learn that everybody is different, everybody, every woman's vagina is different. Their clit is different. Some things work and you ask questions what mm-hmm. works for you? What do you like? Does this feel good? Do you need more pressure? I that's voicing it as well. But for a guy to actually accept and acknowledge the fact that we are not yeah. all built the same and we all need different yep. things, the better you will be in bed, you know? Oh, for sure. So. For sure. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's just so true. And I think that comes from a lot of a lack of knowledge in men mm-hmm. and women about women's sexuality and their sexual organs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It's funny. Uh, my friends tease me all the time because I like younger guys. And I find that the younger guys are actually more open and more receptive to uh, them. And yeah, yeah. they have that whole whatever MILF older woman teach me attitude, right. whereas older yeah. guys are like, you know, more hesitant and stuck in their mm-hmm. beliefs and their thoughts that like they already know what they're doing. And if you tell them yeah, they're doing yeah. something wrong, they're offended, you right. know, or if you suggest something that you like, they're actually, it's a hit to their ego totally. rather than, so then it becomes about them. Yeah. It's yeah. not about the woman. It's, it's about their ego and their ego is not getting stroked and they're not the man, you know, yeah. like I can totally appreciate that. And it really, it does give me hope to see younger people that have broken some of that stuff that people more of the older generations are just destroying shit with into relationships. They're more open to learning and they're more open. They know more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're not stuck in these horrible, bad places. Oh, I know of something I was going to say too. One of the most fascinating things I learned recently was from a man who is, who does like, I think he does like sex change surgeries or something. He, I don't know if you heard about this, but he actually counted how many nerve endings there are in the clit. There's over 10,000, uh-huh. which is like double what's in the penis. Okay. 
Isn't that wild? That is. And actually, maybe then like that's where it's like they're not all in the one little tip place that we seem to think that they are. Yes. Yes. That that brings me to the thought. Also, the woman that was telling me about the clip mapping, she was telling me that there's some people that have done research where they are assessing the contractions across the vagina in response to stimuli. And there's some in there that maybe may not even fully register to the woman, but is impacting her experience. So there are places all over that we don't really probably realize that we're feeling, but it's impacting our overall arousal. Isn't that wild? She's a doctor. So she (laughs) she knows about all this kind of stuff. Like that is like just mind blowing and and really cool that someone's doing that. Yeah. Someone's doing that research. Like, damn, you go whoever you are. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love learning about it and I love talking about it. Oh, I do too. It's yeah. amazing. So what have you learned from doing podcasting that you didn't expect that you would have enjoyed? Like, do you, do you, what do you enjoy about it? I think for me, it's really just like meeting other people that are like-minded and yeah. I have made so many good friends from doing it. And some yeah. people like that I've met that are just like, you know, why don't you come down and like, and visit people that I've interviewed. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. And mm-hmm. I've literally booked flights and gone and stayed with some of these people that are oh, now like good cool. friends of mine. And it's mm-hmm. just one of those things where it's like, I find as soon as you start talking about sex with somebody, mm-hmm. there's like a different type of a bond of connection where it's like, I know yeah. you more than I would have known you if I had, you know, conversation about Plato and baking for like yeah, two right. years. And Mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. just becomes like this trust and this connection where you feel like you don't have to hide who you are. You're just feel seen, you feel heard. And like, you can literally just be your authentic self and people accept that. And then it's like, you just build this network of people that I feel like I could reach out to any of the men or women that I've interviewed in the last year at any given time and be like, I'm coming to your city. Let's get, yes, come stay with me. Yes. Let's go do this. And it's just like a a friendship that is developed through having similar beliefs and an openness to, to share and to talk. And that's what I love. I totally know what you're saying. And it's, it's like a different mindset of people that are willing Mm -hmm. to talk about sex so that that in itself already is just very different compared to, yeah, like sitting around talking about Plato, like you said, or anything, you know, anything that's not sexual. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally, totally amazing. And that's really cool. I mean, to think about that network you're building. And you're also opening things up for other people, sexuality, people listen to a podcast, like that's mm-hmm. just fantastic. So yeah. yeah, I think it's awesome that we're doing this. I think it's what the world needs and it's one place we can do it where we're not censored, you know, like you go yeah. kind of put a book on Amazon, you have to follow all these different rules and all that. And podcasting is different. <laughs> it is right. You can just, you can speak your mind. Nobody's filtering it. Nobody's censoring it. If they don't like it, they don't have to listen to you. But I think it gives people permission to have the same thoughts, permission to, you know, discover more, want more, to learn more, to be curious and to like hear that other everyday normal men and women feel the same way, think the same way and are talking about the same things and like that they can too and that it's okay, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, you know, in, in many ways, it can change large volumes of people as they listen mm-hmm. to this. And I always think, too, like across the world, a lot of people listen to podcasts in very different cultures who are going to learn things, whether they like entirely what we're talking about or not, they're still going to learn things they probably wouldn't have in their, their own culture, because a lot of these cultures are really restrictive, you know? Oh, shoot, you froze. Yeah, you, you froze me? on my end, too, for a second there. Oh, okay. <laughs> there. Good. I'm glad we didn't lose it. Okay. <laughs> well, this has been an amazing discussion. I really enjoyed it. Is there anything you'd like to say or talk about or point out or highlight before we finish our chat? Um, I think just for like anybody who is listening, just to absolutely accept themselves for where they are at in their sexual journey of whether it's healing, discovery, curiosity, but to just go into it with a level of curiosity to learn more about yourself, to discover more, and to be open to having conversations with whoever your partner is or future partners about your needs and your wants, and that they are just as important as theirs. Men or women, whatever it is, just to remember that your needs and your pleasure is so important and you deserve it. 
Absolutely. I completely 100% agree. Super important and well said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But thank you for having me on. I really, oh, yes. really did love this conversation. It was really fun. And so people can find Sex and Bacon on all the podcast apps, the, the usual you ones. Betcha. Yeah. Apple, Spotify. We have a YouTube channel as well. So you can actually watch some of the videos because we do have toys on there too sometimes. And so we're very animated with what we, what we share. Yeah. And, and then you have just a call host, right? Instagram. I or do she... sometimes. Okay. I do a lot of solo interviews. I do have a girlfriend who did co-host quite a few episodes in the beginning with me on and off, but okay. mostly okay. lately it's been a lot of solo, solo interviews and stuff with guests and stuff. And so, and actually this would be one year this month, actually pretty sure last week was our one year and oh, so nice. we're gonna switch things Congrats. up actually, which I'm really excited for kind of like a season two starting. We're going to take a couple weeks break in the summer and then revamping and kind of coming at things in a different different way with some different research of different places and sharing yeah. the experiences in that way. So I'm excited for that. So very cool. And then what's your at on Instagram again? So on Instagram, we are at confessions of a fuckaholic. Yep. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Definitely an intriguing title, right? Get people interested in that. <laughs> well, honestly, you can't have sex on that. So I had tons of at sex and bacon, sex and bacon, this sex and bacon. And they were always got like taken down. Uh, so yeah. it was just like, cool. You can't use the word sex, but you can use the word fuck. So <laughs> isn't that yeah. interesting? I know. I wondered if they balked at that when I saw the fuckaholic. I'm like, well, they must not because you're there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, they surprisingly never had an issue with it. but. Yeah. But sex, I know, because so many people on Instagram will be like S E G G S, you know, for sex and oh, yeah, S E C K S and all this stuff. Like, why does sex have to be such a taboo word? We're all here because of sex. Why wouldn't exist? Exactly. But I mean, like that censorship that it's so wrong to mm -hmm. mention and breathe the one thing that we all do, animals do, you know? I know, right? I know. I always tell my Instagram story that pissed me off. I'll tell us real quick. Probably my listeners have heard this more than once, but I was answering a poll from a woman who's physician and she's trying to teach people have better pelvic floor, better sex, all that kind of stuff. And so she had this poll out there that said, which part of your body for women brings you the most pleasure, your orgasm the most from, or something like that. And I said the word clitoris. I got this notification saying I couldn't say the word clitoris. I'm like, fuck you. She can say it, but I can't say it because I'm a smaller account and it's a body part. So it's like, you're telling me my body part is a bad word. So I got really pissed off and I went back and I did it again, but I put in the word penis. Oh, no warning there. I could say penis all I wanted. I'm like, you fuckers. Mm. Jeez. I know. Isn't that disturbing? I was like, yeah. I just left the platform. I'm like, that is offensive for you to tell me my body part word is an offensive word. And it's a literally a medical word definition yes, of it. Body part. That's yeah. like saying your eyebrow is a bad word. Because yeah. It's a body part. It exists. I was yeah. livid. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I would be pissed too. Yeah. And but... it bugged me is that she could do it in yeah. her post. And I couldn't because I was a much smaller account. I couldn't say clitoris, but she did. She could. Yeah. The censorship, right? That's crazy. <sighs> they, have, they have different rules for different accounts. I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, and you, I've seen porn on there. I've seen naked people on there and they're still doing it. Same thing on Twitter. You know, you've got, I've seen some of these Twitter accounts that are like, you know, hundreds of thousands of people and they're putting porn on there. Other people, they, they show any kind of body part. Oh, they lose their account. I was actually shocked at the things that you could find on Twitter. On oh, Twitter is right. Yes. If they're <laughs> censoring it more now than they ever have, but yeah. That's crazy. There's a lot of porn on Twitter. There really is. Oh, yeah. of sexuality and it's more open to sexuality topics, but it's getting more censored than it used to be. Like I could understand having like a whole little, like, you know, click here, verify your 18, no different than any porn website, yeah, but right you know, like allow people to make that distinction of like, I'm clicking here. I'm saying I'm of age instead right. of just being like, nobody can put this here because of the children. Well, I know, right? you know, my child knows how to go to porn hub. I'm sure too. And can click the thing that says he's 18. He's uh, nine. Yeah. like, let's be honest. Exactly. There are more tech savvy than the children are more tech savvy than we are. They don't know how to get into things. It's ridiculous. And yeah, you're oh, right. Yeah. It's just a click. Yeah. I'm 18. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? They don't know what it means. They just know if they click that box, that means they have access to whatever they want. Mm, so exactly. It's silly. It's the hiding of sex again. Yeah. 1000 crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been really fun. I really enjoyed our chat. So thank yeah, you for coming on. You. I'm so glad that you, you know, invited me and I'm glad that we got to have this conversation. And I really hope that everybody, I know that everybody will get a lot of value and like, you know, out of it. So that's great. Yeah. Absolutely. And I hope they do. Thanks again. You have a good day. Thank you. You as well. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you for listening to our chat. It was so much fun. We really had fun. I love talking to other women. I love talking to other podcasters. I just, I love talking to people and especially people who are open and like to talk about things. And Sarah was definitely open and we had a fun chat. We had a good time and we talked about podcasting. Obviously, if you listen to it, you know. So thank you for being here still if you are, because you are the best. Oh, yeah. Again, our links are down in the podcast show notes. If you'd like to support us, find out more about us. Come find us all over, baby. We got stuff out there. And listen to Sarah's podcast, Sex and Bacon. Such a good name, isn't it? It's intriguing. When I first saw it, I'm like, huh, Sex and Bacon. Hmm. <laughs> Quite the name. And she does a great job. So check her out. Thank you so much for listening to this. And don't forget to enjoy your bodies. Hey, we were given these organs for a reason, to enjoy our bodies, enjoy our life. And, you know, they are magic, sex magic, if you want to call it that. Because when you orgasm, you feel better. You get amazing hormones flooding throughout your body. You get healing, restoration. You get to recharge. You feel amazing after you climax, right? Yes. Get more of that in your life daily, baby. Make sure you come today. Don't listen to these people that I tell you you're not supposed to. Do they also say don't use your taste buds? Mm, I don't think so. We were given these organs for a reason to enjoy our lives. If we weren't supposed to enjoy it, we wouldn't have been given the pleasure sensations that are built in our bodies. This is ridiculous. We were meant to enjoy ourselves, enjoy our bodies, our sexuality and sensuality. Make sure you come today, baby. Oh, fuck yeah. You have an amazing fucking day. Love ya. Bye-bye now. And don't forget to go check out the Planet X Network, powered by Pod Nations Pods on Roku TV and on Fire TV. You can check out the podcast Real Sharks Podcast. Reviews that scare. Entertain this. That's my sports podcast. Digging in the Dome. Slam City Podcast. Pods Like Us. The Happy Hour Podcast. And so much more. Amazing, amazing. So check it out and enjoy. Oh, fuck yeah. Let's go.